Madam Speaker, I rise to ask question number 95 of 2015, put under my name. The question is addressed to the Honourable Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation. Can the Minister explain the status of violence against women in Fiji? Thank you. Thank you. The Honourable Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation. Madam Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for the question. Um, the question on uh, the status of violence against women and children in Fiji. If I may start off with uh, the study report that was conducted by the Fiji Women's Christ Centre in 2010 and 2011, which led to the publication of uh, a report titled Somebody's Life, Everybody's uh, Business Away. It revealed that 64% uh, of women are subjected to domestic violence in Fiji. And that is woefully too high. Fiji thus is rated second highest in the region in regards to domestic violence. Our Prime Minister uh, at the inaugural address at the Pacific Women's Parliamentary Forum uh, said, and I quote, at government level we have zero tolerance for domestic violence in Fiji, whether it is men beating women, women attacking men, parents hitting children. It is not acceptable, full stop. And we have given instructions to all the instruments of the state that the perpetrators of domestic violence are to be subject to the full force of the law." Unquote. Madam Speaker, the Fijian government views violence against women as everyone's responsibility. In this regard, we need a concerted effort in educating our communities, providing them with appropriate information, guidance on all aspects of life, to increase sense of responsibility and helping build character and strength. Men and boys in particular need to be educated in responsible fatherhood. Fiji, Madam Speaker, has pioneered a community-based program called Zero Tolerance Violence Free Community. This is a 10-phase program wherein communities progress from being a community that has a high rate of domestic violence to one being declared as violence-free. Within this uh, program, we have uh, gatekeepers that have been established to ensure that women live in a violence-free community where they are protected and safe. The gatekeepers uh, committee is made up of community leaders, faith-based organization leaders, Turangani Koros, village headmen, women representatives, youth representatives, and advisory councils. Women representatives and youth representatives are community members themselves who are trained and mentored for counseling for victims of domestic violence. Uh, currently, we have uh, 39 communities that have been declared uh, violence-free, while we are working with 50 other communities to establish these zones. Um, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, uh, currently the Ministry is working to st strengthening its memorandum of uh, agreement with the Fiji Police Force because we believe we have perfect laws, but the implementation of these laws is a problem for us. Um, our constitution provides for protection and there are various laws which are relevant to the domestic violence and these are domestic violence decree, the crimes decree, the Employment and Promulgation Act, the Family Law Act, the Child Welfare Decree, Sentencing and Penalties Decree, and of course, the Criminal Procedure Decrees. To move forward, to move forward Madam Speaker, what is needed is, is to build capacity within our stakeholders to have a sense of urgency when responding to victims of domestic violence. There are still gaps in the full implementation of the Domestic Violence Decree, and we are working in partnership with the uh, Police Department to ensure that the no-drop policy is upheld at all times. We are also collaborating with the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre on a communication plan towards the elimination of domestic violence and moves are to set in place a domestic violence helpline parallel to the National Child Helpline that has already been established. All in all, Madam Speaker, changing mindsets is very important to ensure that our women and children are not subjected to the ongoing violence. And, uh, <coughs> To make the change needed in Fiji, we need to strengthen our family values and norms. We need to strengthen positive parenting, premarital counseling, and goodwill ambassadorship program, and nurturing discipline in all our children now. This can be done and needs all of us to walk in solidarity to battle domestic violence. The Fijian government has given the boldest political mandate that it does not tolerate domestic violence in our nation. It is this that will drive us to battle domestic violence now and in the future. Thank you. <coughs> Supplementary question, the Honourable Dr. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. I commend the Honourable Minister for what she has just set out. And uh, in the spirit of what uh, my learned uh, friend has talked about today's 28th uh, year anniversary, and in the theme of Wereum Bumbi, I ask then my supplementary question to the Minister, will she consider training programs by her ministry and uh, calling guest lecturers from abroad to talk to the instruments of state which glorify violence in our country. Uh, I won't name them, we all know who they are. Uh, and uh, how she uh, intends to go about that because uh, if we don't deal with it at the very high level, nothing happens at the bottom. Before I ask the Honourable Minister to answer the question, can you just um, interpret that uh, vernacular word that you had mentioned, just mentioned? Into English. Sweeping things under the carpet and Sweeping. dealing with uh, things at a very shallow level. The Honourable Minister. Uh, Madam Speaker, if, if I can come back to the point of sweeping things under the carpet, I think uh, we have opened up, women are opening up and talking about the suffering that they have. So basically this issue is definitely uh, not being swept under the carpet. We will deal with it. And in terms of uh, how we are going to implement gender mainstreaming and gender sensitization across all uh, institutions, including the government. And that is what we are working with the, uh, the NGOs who have the capacity, who have the resources, who have the training. And I'm glad to say that uh, we have developed a very positive uh, relationship with the NGOs now, especially the Women's Crisis Center, which has the necessary expertise. And it is these organizations that will assist the ministry in ensuring that we have gender mainstreaming and gender sensitization from across government levels to the very basic uh, institutions that fall beneath us. And definitely, I can assure the House, we will not be shallow in our approach and we will not sweep things uh, beneath the carpet. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary question, the Leader, Honorable Leader of Opposition. Honourable Speaker, I thank the uh, Minister for her, <coughs> for her tackling this uh, issue, Madam Speaker. My question to her is, if there's any provision in the community for safe houses, for either in the villages or communities or squatter settlements, because that is uh, very much needed when uh, these uh, abuses occur, that the safe houses are identified so that the people in that area know exactly where they go to immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, and I thank the Leader of Opposition for posing a very, very important question. Of course, it's a challenge for us to house these women um, uh, when, when they are victims of uh, domestic violence. Currently, we have state care homes, which we at times use as an emergency purpose. We do not have a permanent safe, safe house, but plans are underway. And uh, uh, we have, uh, like I said, we are working closely with the NGOs. And uh, one of the NGOs has come on board with us and they, to assist us in this program. But of course, the, state house is, uh, the safe house is going to be theirs. So hopefully, we, we will see two safe houses in Fiji. In, um, well, I wouldn't say in partnership. It's something that the NGOs are planning. But then, of course, there are plans to have at least one for the, for the government side. Um, if I can also um, inform the House, we t as I said, we take these issues very seriously. And we have our officers who work 24-7 to ensure that when a report is, uh, uh, when a report is uh, raised with us, we provide them uh, instant service. We have a response team that uh, works 24 hours to ensure that we provide the best service to these victims. Thank you. Thank you, and I give the floor to the Honourable Salatir and Honourable. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I take this opportunity to thank the Honourable Minister for highlighting this very important and uh, a problem that continues to rise in our country. Uh, can the Honourable Minister confirm when will the relevant reports on violence against women and children, like the state uh, CEDAW report, the latest uh, CEDAW shadow reports by the non-government organizations, and also the Fiji Women's Crisis Center reports be tabled in this August House so that they are channeled to the relevant uh, standing committee for scrutiny and further addressing this issue, uh, and I believe with much political will. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. 
Honourable Minister. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. In, in case of the uh, CEDAW report, uh, the CEDAW report uh, has uh, already been presented to Cabinet. And uh, yes, and uh, hopefully soon we will present the CEDAW report to Parliament. But in case of the Women's Rights Centre report, uh, I do not see that we would be able to present here, but the Women's Crisis Centre reports could be accessed from the Women's Crisis Centre. But any other report regarding this that has to come through Cabinet to Parliament will definitely be tabled in Parliament. Thank you. Okay, just one more. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. One. An item that I love seeing in all the villages is this billboard saying violence-free community. And the more I learn about it, the more convinced that that's the way to go because the, the certification process is about 12 months to earn that billboard, which many villages now display with pride. But I'm a little disappointed, Madam Speaker. I thought there were 70 villages that have qualified to, to display this board. I'm, I hear there's only 39 because if anything, can the ministry double the work on that one so that the dialogue at the village level, at the community level, can be such that at the end of 12 months, everyone could be speaking the same language in terms of violence against women? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Minister. Um, Madam Speaker, I thank the Honorable uh, Member for bringing up the issue. Of course, there are 39 communities that have been declared and we are working with 50 more before we declare them and I think uh, we will hasten our work and uh, we will have many communities in Nandrunga very soon declared <laughs> violence free. Thank you.